I'm your friend, Dr. Charles Apoki. I want to just use this portion of my compound to illustrate what we have been sharing. Wealth is cultivated. It is nurtured. It is grown. And then you start to pick the harvest with time. Each tree in this compound has a history. This uh, pear tree, African pear tree, is called Ube in Igbo language, was what we bought, we ate, and then it grew, and we transplanted it here. It was a seed that we planted. It has become a tree. And we are patiently waiting for it to fruit. Patiently. It's been years here for some years. We are patiently waiting for it to fruit. This attempt to get wealthy overnight is what is responsible for rituals, responsible for internet fraud, responsible for blackmail. Somebody has been trying to blackmail me for some days now, trying to use a video of somebody from my family that was naive enough to fall into his trap. But I refuse to be blackmailed. Money is made legitimately and gradually. You see, this is an orange tree. We bought the orange, we ate the orange, the seed grew. Today, it is fruiting and we have lots of fruit that we have plucked, we have eaten, our visitors come and they pluck fruits, they drop. And the good thing about this orange tree is that it fruits throughout the year. I don't know how, but nearly every time we have orange fruits here. Yeah. This avocado pear, we bought, we ate, and we planted. It grew. And we have been eating avocado from here. We had to pluck a lot of them. But what prompted this video was that this morning, I came down from upstairs to look for my mechanic and I saw avocado fruit on the ground and I picked. I turned this way. I saw coconut fruit on the ground. Coconut fruit had fallen. I bought four coconuts, growing coconuts, for 800 naira some years back with my wife at, at, at uh, just the town after Owe. And they grew. And uh, recently we made coconut candy from them and sold in the school. So that 800 naira would have been exhausted by now. We would, could have bought something on the way and forgotten about the 800 Naira many years back. But look at what it has become. It has grown. The next thing I want to focus on, these plantains you are seeing here, they were thrown away. Thrown away near the express road. Somebody wanted to build a house somewhere and he uprooted them and threw them, went, threw them away. And I picked them and planted round here eight. And I've been multiplying them. Even if it rains and they fall, I will tear the tuber at the back into four, replant. That is how I have planted plantains all over here. If you look carefully, I'm going to zoom this now. You will see that this one produces the one on the left 
produces two bunches at once. Two bunches at once. I borrowed, I begged somebody, my neighbor, uh, Reverend Idu Agogoria, who was the original owner. I begged him for some suckers and I planted. And I don't know if he still has the suckers, but I still have mine. And mine are yielding me fruit. I sell plantain suckers from here. Like this sucker now, it's 250 naira per sucker. 250 naira per sucker. There was a month I sold suckers of 100,000 naira from this place and the school compound because I have behind the school compound. The ones in the school compound were the Agbagba species that somebody from Obiaja brought. We used to do a lecture and we sold them. And the remnants, the remnants that were thrown away, I took them and planted. And I've been harvesting plantain from there. How much money have you been throwing away with excitement, throwing away with drinks, throwing away with cigarettes? If you are a smoker listening to me, just try and calculate how much you have thrown away in smoking, thrown away in clubbing, thrown away in drinking. This is... Uh, a mango tree. We bought the mango, we ate it, and it grew, and uh, we tr transplanted it here. And we've been eating mangoes for weeks now. We took them, we they plucked them, and then uh, we've been eating, we have at home. This is an another orange tree. This is another orange tree and another orange tree. All of them grew from uh, uh, seeds of oranges that we did not intentionally plant. As they grew, we started uh, harvesting. And this is bitter leaf. Uh, I have had to cut it down, but it is growing again. We, somebody, with the compound we were living, our former place where we were tenants, we took a stem and planted. And we've never bought bitter leaf for years. For years. Close to five to six to ten years now, we've never bought bitter leaf. Then, what will I zoom on again? We have another mango tree here. I can't remember how we got this but we didn't intentionally plant it. It was something that we bought, ate. When we saw the potential, we nurtured it. This is another coconut here, out of the ones we bought for 800 Naira. The point I'm trying to make is that wealth is grown. Wealth is nurtured. Wealth, creating wealth is deliberate, deliberate. When you see a potential in something, deliberately grow it, deliberately nurture it. This is our poultry, poultry in our compound. And uh, it started as a fish pond the fish pond did not work well, so we converted it to a poultry. So we sell eggs, we sell broilers, and uh, I was discussing with my wife this morning that we'll buy another carton of broilers just to rear, so that we don't buy chicken because she heard on radio that food was going to be scarce. If you go further down, I have three species of um, 
bananas down. There's one that is very nice by the left. And then there's another one I brought from Okigwe. I went to preach at Okigwe and I saw the banana species. And Dr. Paul, the beloved, helped me to uh, dig them out. And I took them from Okigwe. So I'm still eating the bananas from Okigwe about five years back. I have another species there that I got from um, um, Reverend Jehwe. Reverend Jehwe. And uh, I planted. And the bananas I'm going to eat this morning with my breakfast, or I will take to the farm, are uh, from that species I borrowed from Jehwe. He has forgotten about it. You can borrow knowledge, you can borrow ideas, you can borrow business skills, you can even borrow capital to start. Somewhere down there, behind this place, we have another species of bananas. It's like a, 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 a mixture of um, a hybrid between banana and plantain. And um, it's very good for uh, plantain chips, very good for what we call dodo and it's the, 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 the fruits are big and plentiful. I borrowed that one from Arrow Town. I was going somewhere and um, I begged the woman, I was going to the front, I begged the woman to give me um, um, some suckers and she gave me two suckers and I planted. I don't know what will become of this and I've been harvesting for years. I don't know what will become of this purple trees here. Uh, they are already fruiting. We ate purple and threw into the dustbin. They are fruiting. A lot of the wealth in Europe and the things that Africa throws away that we can't manage well, we don't have value for, we don't nurture. You'll be surprised how much of your life you throw away on a daily basis. Let me now come to the funny side. This is a gift, and I want to thank the owner for the gift. This is a gift. I have to use it to produce wealth. If not, it becomes a liability. I have to deliberately use it to produce wealth not to use it as a status symbol. Let me come this way. My wife bought this car in 2015 for me. She bought it because uh, there was no good car in the house. She bought it. And I've been using it to create wealth. I use it to carry my school children. When parents see that you use this SUV to come and carry school children, they are usually more excited, and the children are excited. It became a tale in town that Dr. Pokey, that school that they use a SUV to carry school children. So uh, I used it to carry poultry manure. There was a time I used it to carry cassava. Uh, I used it to carry Cucumba, I use it to go to the farm. And uh, I've been using it for seven years now. Now, the engine is bad. And we need to work on the engine. And it's costing me quite some money to work on the engine. But the truth of the matter is that whatever I'm spending, this car has worked it. I did not buy it for luxury alone. I bought it to create wealth. Bought it to create wealth. So, people, I want to show you something that will amuse you, that will fascinate you. People think that I am too frugal. They think that I don't enjoy. Some say I am miserly. Some say... Uh, <laughs> so they say all kinds of things about me, but I'm just a simple man following simple principles. I enjoy life, 
but I enjoy it in such a way that it does not. You see all those bottles of wine there, all these bottles of wine. They are gifts. People who come to consult me, people who come to invite me, they come with money and wine. And I sit down with my wife in the evening after freezing it, I drink. So I enjoy, but most times I don't pay for my enjoyment. The price I paid when I was building a legacy is paying for my enjoyment. I stay in the best hotels in this country, paid for. I don't pay for my flights. My flights are paid for. Let me quickly just pan around and tell you something and I'm done. This is my residence. I'm making full use of it. I live on four plots of land of um, 200 feet by 100 feet. This was the first segment I lived in. Then I moved and built this one, Principle of Gradualism. It was the only unpainted building in the street. Only unpainted building in the street. But I was recycling my money in such a way that these tiles on the walls are made, are, are procured from profit, profit, profit. It is, they are the great, great, great grandchildren of the money that I had invested over the years. Let me quickly show you something. Some of these tiles here, I bought them six years before I used them. Principle of gradualism. I still have the receipts. I bought them from Cook Road in uh, Port Harcourt. I mean, uh, Cook Road in uh, Benin City. 400 and something thousand naira then, which was quite a lot of money. I bought them six years before I used them. I think far ahead. And today, this property that I bought for 250, I mean 350,000 Naira is worth several millions. That time, I could have used it to buy one funny car. By now, the car will be dilapidated. This place was part of a factory and we bought and um, it is um, giving me so much joy that I was wise enough to invest. I wanted to show you the solar panels that we have upstairs, but uh, I'm not able to show you because I'm not in a vantage position. I started buying the panels and the batteries gradually. When I go to preach, I come back, I buy one panel, buy two batteries like that. Today, I have 247 electricity. We might not become Dangote in a minute. We might not become Adeleke, but we can be okay. The principle of gradualism works. The principle of cultivating your money works. The principle of labeling your money works. The principle of having value for little thing works. I have been collecting the heads of the pineapples that we eat, and I'm planting them at a front door. Even the heads of the yams that we eat, I've been planting them. I'm going to have a great harvest. Recently, I stopped by a woman selling pineapples and begged her the heads of pineapples she threw away. How much of life are you driving past? How much of life are you throwing away? How much of the remnants of your life are you reinvesting? How much of the substance of your life are you investing? Somebody said, we get wise too late and get old too quickly. May God help you. May God bless you. 
to put these things into practice as part of the legacy of raising one million African entrepreneurs. I no be Dangote, I no be Adeleke, but I did okay. God bless you. I'm your friend, Dr. Charles Apoki.